Morning. Morning. Welcome to Friday. Yes, welcome. Very exciting. Excuse me for. Um, He's gonna um, try and find our feed. Make sure we don't pixelate. Right, exactly. What well, she said. <laughs> so hopefully he'll be able to do that. Um, so this morning for breakfast, I'm gonna have an apple and some peanut butter because I have an early lunch meeting. I'm actually meeting someone at 11:30. So even mm -hmm. though I made my uh, my oatmeal overnight, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not gonna eat it this morning because that'll be way too much food for me to then try and eat again at 11.30. Um, what about you? What are you having? Um, I think I'm going to have oatmeal this morning. You are going to have oatmeal. I think I will, yes. <laughs> All the standard stuff in it? All the standard stuff. Okay, and we have uh, cashews we're eating. So we're picking on cashews. I had a banana before I went to the gym this morning. Right. Excuse me, folks. I'm moving you around a little bit. <sighs> There we go. Better? That's better. Okay, good. Um, what would you do in the gym? Today was leg day. And I mean all of legs today. So I did quads, mm -hmm. I did hamstrings, mm -hmm. and I did calves. And as I told you, the funny thing about that is I don't think I've ever done calves the same day I've done quads and hamstrings before. Not ever? I'm doing them, and I'm like shaking. I'm like, my calves are going, what are you doing? You'd be a little crazy. <laughs> Why did you do calves with, with the rest of your legs today? Because, of course, we missed the day this week at the gym because of the weather. Right. And the gym was closed. Mm -hmm. It opened up too late for us to go. Um, so I had to do a makeup. Okay. It was a makeup session. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, I did chest today. Um, and it, I, my shoulder is still bothering me. As you know, my massage therapist has been working on it. So I didn't. I had to go pretty light, but that was fine. I did all the exercises. I just did them light and did more sets, mm -hmm. so it was fine. And then I ended up. We were early this morning, but of course Jim wanted to use a uh, Jim. Russ wanted to use all the time at the gym, <laughs> um, all of the time. So even though we got there early, we stayed the same amount of time. So I ended up riding the bike for about 20 minutes mm -hmm. while he was finishing up. So that was good. I haven't yeah. ridden the bike yet this this month. I realized yeah, because first my time. hip's been bothering yeah. me. True. So that was a good. I feel like I had a good workout. So we wanted to talk about Russ read. He's been reading the book How Not to Die, which I talked about when I read it, but now he's been reading it. Right. And he noticed last night he was reading about diabetes and pre-diabetes and some studies they've done. Right. So we're, I'm going to let him talk about that. Oh boy, people, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the interesting thing about that, the, what I took from the section that I read about diabetes, is um, the myth, as we've talked about, of the cause. Mm -hmm. And what continues to be the cause, and a lot of doctors, and I want to say, of course, I am not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. Uh, so always refer to your doctor before you tell anything different. Um, but in this particular case, so they did a study. They had a bunch of diabetic people as subjects. And they, they split them apart. Half of the subjects, they fed them basically starches and sugars, including table sugar, so which is sucrose. In the other study, they fed them mostly animal fats. So, you know, they, they obviously found the meat, but, but all the, the fats that you get from animal products. And at the end of the study, when they retested everybody, the people that were on the starches and the sugars, their diabetes actually got better, and the people that were doing on the fat, their diabetes got worse. So I think it's a bit of a misconception out there that, you, that people think you got to stop eating sugar if you have type. This is, by the way, type 2 diabetes. Yeah. Um, as as um, Dr. Uh, McDougall said, I believe it was, the type type one diabetes is a real um, non-curable disease, and I guess he's even saying type uh, one and a half or one point five. You can make it better, but you can't you cure it. You can't all the cure way. it completely, right? Those will you'll always need insulin for those. Um, type right, of but diabetes. type two you can cure all the way. No, we're not saying if you're type two diabetic that you should go run off and just start eating table sugar. Right. Not what we're telling. Not you. what we're telling you. What we're telling you is. If you reduce the amount of animal product you're taking in and increase the plants you're taking in, your diabetes are going to, is going to it's get going better. It's going to get better. Yes, that's what we're saying. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, what else did you discover? What was interesting is that so we went into a little bit of explanation of, of why this is happening. Mm -hmm. and which is, which is What I took from it is another interesting point that they made is that when people start getting fat, start putting on too much weight, mm -hmm. my assumption always was, well, you're, you're – building more cells. You get more cells in your body, so right. you're getting fat. Not That's not true at all. Actually, what's happening is fat is, is getting inside your individual cells and just making them larger. Mm -hmm. Hence, diabetes. Diabetes or insulin has to break through the cells, and insulin is the gateway. And it's, it keeps trying to push more right, and more fat. Yeah, insulin, which your body makes, is, right. is the key to open up the gate 
to get through. Right. The problem tell is, them. Don't tell oh, me. I'm sorry. The <laughs> problem is, um, the fat is the gel that, that somebody sticks in the lock so you can't get the key in there. And as you keep gaining weight and you keep okay. getting heavier, um, the key can't get through. And that's what causes diabetes. And as the cells get bigger and bigger, their insulin and every, it's trying to stick more and more fat in there because that's where it goes. That's where right. fat goes is in, right. those cells. in those cells. And then those cells get so much in them that they get leaky and then it ends up in your blood. And it's, that's and it's, exactly what, yes, yeah, she already read this. So she's, <laughs> she can fill in anytime she wants. Um, another interesting thing that they talked about is uh, pre-diabetes, usually what they used to diagnose in uh, children. So, right, so um, like they've renamed all this, right? Like. Type 2 diabetes used to be adult. Tell them. Used to be adult diabetes or adult something diabetes. Adult, adult onset. Onset diabetes. Mm -hmm. And then they realized children were getting it too, so that's why they changed it to type 2 diabetes. Um, and they call it what they call pre-diabetes in children. It's actually diabetes. It's it's the symptoms. It's like the, the finish line's right there, and they're just about ready to cross over. And, and adults can be pre-diabetic too. Adults can well. Is, so it's... It's right before you've reached the actual criteria for being right. diabetic. Mm -hmm. It's right before you get there. Right. Um, Thank you, Wendy. I'm glad we could explain things effectively. We're trying over here. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. Um, what, what Robin will tell you is sometimes I'll be talking about something, I have a point, and I'll think about something in the middle of the point. Oh, let me go over here with this one. And I'll do that sometimes. So forgive me. She'll usually pull me back in and says, all right, big boy, let's bring that back in. <laughs> um, so... Type 2 diabetes is is definitely an, an onset disease, and because you can get it, you can cure it, you can cure. which is an in interesting because I never realized that till I started doing all this research that we mm -hmm. do in, in this food stuff that we're doing, is that you can cure type 2 diabetes if you choose to do so, and it's about taking control about what you eat. Right. And I said last week, and I'm going to say it again because I feel like it's so powerful. One thing you get to control 100% is the food you eat. That's that right. is something you absolutely get to control. No one is telling control. you what you have to eat. Right. And so if you choose to, to eat healthy, to eat plants, to reduce the amount of animal product you're eating or eliminate it, you're gonna be healthier. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts. This right. is not a if this you is, do it yeah. right thing. Yeah, this, this is not is, pseudoscience. <laughs> no, if you eat more plants, you will be healthier. That's that's the fact. Now I did see a post today, I'm in a, in a group that claims to be a whole food plant-based group. It's not, the advice they give in that group is scares me. And I can't go in and correct them all all the time. It, that makes me nuts. But one person said that she went um, vegan 11 days ago and she can't find anything to eat. So that's interesting. I'm reading uh, Laura's comment. Yes, agreed, Laura. It's preventable. She's yes. saying diabetes is preventable. Right. Um, but this, this woman who said that she went vegan, vegan, and you know vegan and, and whole food plant-based are different things, but she went vegan and she didn't know what to eat. And I don't. I guess for me, I understand in that there's a paradigm in America that you eat meat first and then other things are just add-ons. Right. But there's so much food. Yesterday was a fasting day for us. But I felt like I didn't really have anything made because the potato enchiladas that I made over the weekend are almost gone. And so really quickly, it took me like 20 minutes, I chopped up a whole bunch of vegetables, I threw them in a pot, threw some water on it, cooked it for like 45 minutes, ran the immersion blender through it, and voila, we had vegan pea soup. It was, it was good. And it's really good and, and super fun. healthy. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. between... What is the difference between vegan and vegetarian? Yes. That's a good question. And it's a, it's a huge difference, actually. Because... So... Okay. You're gonna explain what we explain. Well, I mean, what else is just to say, just to, uh, just to break it down to as, as simple terms as possible, is vegetarians will eat dairy product. Dairy products, eggs. So vegetarian means you can eat things that come from animals. You just don't eat the animal and itself. The flesh. Yeah. Vegan means you don't eat anything that has animal associated with it. Right. And you also don't wear fur. I mean, so vegan, as we've said before, is a political statement. Whole vegans food. hate it when you say that. I know, but it is. I mean, you know, uh, the vegans I've known have been very, you know, right. up in arms about, you know, that, that was made that, you, how can you wear leather? How can you wear, you know, this right. um, Where a whole food plant-based is all about the nutrition. And that's what we... we right. Uh, so vegetarian means you don't eat meat, but any other product is fine. Vegan means you're all about, well, not all about, that's not fair, but the damage to the animals is a, of concern to you. So leather, right. fur, all of those kind of things. Uh, right. No, we don't eat eggs or dairy either. No, we don't. No, whole food plant-based means 
you eat plants the way they were grown as much as absolutely possible. Right, right. Yeah. So the and the more the more whole foods you get, the less processed food you end up eating. Mm -hmm. I you know I always say if it's made in a plant, it's not food. Right. And also, I just want to say about go back to vegan in a second is that I'm not saying that they're not also in it for the for the health. I mean they absolutely are. I mean that's the whole point also. Right. Is to be healthy. Um, but they just take it, I think, a, a step in a direction that we don't really don't. Right. Want. Whereas, so the classes that I'm taking at eCornell, they do talk about the environment and they do talk about animal rights. And for me, while I care about that and that mm -hmm. I, that matters to me, that's not why I do whole food plant based. Right. So there's kind of four levels, I guess. There's the standard American diet. Maybe there's five. There's a standard American diet, which just eat whatever. Then there's a standard American diet that people think is healthy, which mm -hmm. is cutting out red meat but eating fish, chicken, and turkey. Right. So, and that isn't really any healthier, but a lot of people think that that's a healthy standard American diet. Right. Then you've got the vegetarian, which don't eat meat. And then you've got pescatarians, which don't eat mammals, but they eat fish. Right. And you've got lactotarians, with, which don't eat fish, don't eat meat, but do eat dairy products. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different variations right. of how people go about trying to be healthy. And what it talks about in those books is it lists all the different types of, uh, those types of diets or, or way of eating. And it actually says that when you take the, the full-blown American diet, they are this unhealthy. And every time you take one of those things, that you keep going more to the healthiness, the healthiness, the healthiness, right. the healthiness. So the further it's down that line, you know, yeah. So yeah. if you, you know, if, if you cut out red meat, that's better than not. If right. you cut out all mammals, that's better, better than, than not. not. Exactly. If you eliminate fish, it's better than not. Dairy, right. eggs, all right. of them as you go down the down the chain. Right. So right. And remember, for the fish lovers out there, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it anyhow. I don't actually hate to say it. But, uh, <laughs> uh, most of the fish that we eat in this country comes from China, like 80% of it. Mm -hmm. And they will feed their fish to fish farms. They feed them chicken and, and um, hog feces. Yeah, so, in China, that's what they feed them. So, I mean... And, there, and we mentioned before, there's a lot of fraud in the fish market. There's a lot that of fraud The fish you well. think you're getting is not the fish you're actually getting. Right, right. Thank you for that point, Laura. Yes, I knew you would comment on that. Laura is, is vegan. Right. And she and I have some really good conversations. She's very well informed. So, um, that yes. that's kind of it. And the, we, I, we started this talking about diabetes. The point being that diabetes and prediabetes are reversible. Preventable and reversible. Right. Um, I there's someone on here, and I won't call her out. I know she's here, um, whose husband has cured his diabetes, eating with it with diet and eating right. well. Yeah, so not only have I read it in books, but I know someone personally right. who's done it. So I'm right. super super thrilled with that. And, and, and it's not as hard as you think it is. And we've talked before about how you start. Pick one meal. You know, have oatmeal for breakfast. Mm -hmm. And you can make oatmeal yummy by putting some amazing fruits in it. Right. And it doesn't have to taste yucky. Right. So. And I think it's also important to understand. Bridge called herself out. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's also important to understand that when you go to a doctor and you diagnose as a type 2 diabetic and they give you prescription drugs or insulin shots, those aren't cures. Those are. Um, dealing with the symptoms. Right. They're dealing with the symptoms. Now take them. Don't not take yes, them. Yes, absolutely take but them. They're essential. <laughs> if you're type 2 diabetic, you have to take those. Um, however, if you want to cure it, still take those medications. Start changing your diet and then go back to your doctor and say, I've been doing this diet. Can we test myself again? See how my diabetes is doing. Right. And what should happen, what should happen based on everything we've, we've learned is that they will gradually pull you off the medication. Off your medicine. Exactly. Right, Bridge, exactly. Medication is a Band-Aid yeah. to, to mask the symptoms. It exactly. doesn't actually solve the problem. Exactly. So did you have anything else about diabetes that you um, read that you wanted to share with them? No, I'm still reading about it. I mean, it's talking about, um, it says preventing diabetes by eating more. And of course, we know that's true because the more plant-based, whole food plant-based you eat, the more volume of food you will eat. Right, and it's not, you don't have to worry about proportions. Now, the book that I'm reading, I showed you guys yesterday, um, the rice diet solution, the more I get into it, the more it is a serious hardcore diet book. Right. It's a book about how to lose 200, 300, 400 pounds, mm -hmm. which is an interesting book for me to be reading. 
Um, and it does talk about portion control because people are trying to lose a lot of weight very rapidly. Right. But if you want to lose weight, just you've got a steady progression toward whatever your healthy number is. And the way they define a healthy number in, in that particular book, the rice solution, uh, rice diet solution book, is to what, were you, what did you weigh when you were 18? And they say even if you were overweight at 18, most people as adults would pay money to weigh what they weighed at 18. Right. And they pick 18 because that's when you're done growing and usually before you've started getting really, Before really, you expand. Yeah, getting <laughs> overweight. So that may not be a great number, but it's a place to start. Right. So, um, yes, you can ask a question. Let me see if I can read it. About calcium, yes. Um, yes, you do get enough calcium in a whole food plant-based diet. I actually can talk about that intelligently, so maybe I'll do that. Um, I'll, I'll put that on a different day. I'll actually get my pull my research together. But yes, okay. absolutely, you can maybe get enough calcium. That's our topic for Monday. Mon Monday or Tuesday, maybe. Yeah. So, and I do too, Bridge. I weigh um, what I weighed. Well, I had my wisdom so teeth pulled at 18, so I lost a whole bunch of weight and was really, really thin in yeah. the middle of that year. But I weigh what I weighed as a healthy weight at 18 yeah. now. I, I weighed at, at, at an all time low this morning when I got on. You the did? Show. I'm jealous. All time low, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I'm like, I don't know, do I have to cut out one of my fasting days? Because I don't want to get too late. Eat more seeds. <sighs> yeah, Eat more nuts. I mean, I'm eating a lot of food. So. You, he is eating a lot of food, it's um, true. So, so yeah, we'll talk about calcium next week. That's a great subject. Thank you for asking that, Bridge. Laura makes a point there. So we'll... Um, I'll pull my research together over the weekend, and we can talk about mm -hmm. that. So, I did we get we got off of diabetes again? No, we got everything else? in here. I wanted to share. We shared. So. All right. So we talked about diabetes. We talked about all the different options for eating foods. Basically, eat plants. Right. And we're we're trying to come up with um, a new close for our videos. We're not sure what it's going to be yet. Right. And that's because part of what we say is don't eat not too much. And I feel like if you're eating plant based, you can't eat too much. Right. It's just not viable. So we have right. to come up with a new close. But for now, we're going to do our regular one. Right, exactly. So for now, we will close with our normal one, as she said, <laughs> which is eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great we'll see weekend, you next guys. Week, guys.